The Allens are, you know, people you want your parents to be, you know, people who are great people who are caring, giving, and actually care about their crews. They know everybody's name, they know all the parent, everybody's parents' names, and they're just great people and it gave me a dream job out here at Walker's, and I'm just some kid from Stewart who happened to know Mr. Allen, he hired me, and we've been together ever since, and you know, they're a match made in heaven, they're the easiest bosses to work for, they're long hours, we do fish every single day, we do something every day, but in this line of work, you want to do that. You don't want to be sitting at the dock. And for them to give me and John a chance and opportunity of what we got to do, there's nothing better in the world. I haven't been coming to this island since I was 12 years old. It didn't take me long to realize the rich history it has here. When I bought this island in 2018, I fulfilled a lifelong dream. The goal is not only to preserve the memories I made over those years, but to make new ones, and to give others the opportunity to do the same. As we go through this process, it has become clear to me, we aren't just rebuilding an island, we're reviving a legend. It all started years ago. I mean, I, I grew up uh, going to the Finger Lakes when I was a young kid. That's what got me into the water. I was fishing sailboat and that kind of thing. And then my parents moved to Chicago, and I, I uh, grew up on the shores of Lake Michigan. So it was almost like a little ocean. And I thought, wow, there's just nothing better than Lake Michigan. Until one day I was 12 years old, and my stepdad, uh, who had a home in Stewart, Florida, uh, brought us down and we went out in the ocean that St. Lucie Inlet over there and uh, it was like a new beginning for me. The salt water was just amazing. And I looked out to the east and I said, what, what's out there, you know? And he said, oh, that's the Bahamas. And, and we went over and, and then when you hit the Bahama Banks, I mean, I just knew that, you know, that was it. <laughs> I'm home. And then looking out and I yelled down to the, my stepdad and I said, what is that? And he says, that, my son, is Walker's Key. And pulling in here, remember running down the runway for the first time and jumping in the water everywhere. I mean, it was just a, something you dreamt about as a, as a young kid to be here. You know what's funny is I, I never got that feel, that first initial feeling again until we bought it. People thought I was gonna make this island private. I never had that intention. 
it was always to bring it back to what it was, you know. It was the bones of a lion that I was walking up to, and, and you know, it was in despair. It was hit by two major hurricanes in 04. After that, it just sat here 14 years before I came along. And so one of the things that I had said from the beginning is that I wanted to use as much Bahamian companies and laborers that, that I could. I'm very proud to say that as we are right now with the marina done, uh, everything here has been almost 100% Bahamian. Um, all the stick will, will be Bahamian contractors and, and, and labor. Um, we currently have about 20 Bahamian um, employees right now um, with the expectation that we will employ between 60 and 70 when we're up and running hard and strong, which will be, you know, probably within the next 12 months. I'm Jeff Ray, I'm the superintendent on the island for the construction, and I work for Stratacon Construction. When I said they named us Jeff Ray, I said, well, you, you know, you gotta keep it down to four letters in Alabama or we can't spell it. <laughs> it was a big mess when I landed here, but it's gonna be something that everybody's gonna wanna see. I'm gonna be half proud to have it on my resume. People are gonna have something really to talk about when they come here. I'm actually putting in the infrastructure for the island and the foundations. The, the uh, prefab buildings are right now being constructed in Stewart, Florida. And uh, we'll pick them up, put them on a barge, sail them 100 miles, and set them off on the island when I set them on the foundations that I built. Phase two is going to be pretty much the same thing. We're trying to make a decision right now whether she wants a spa, she wants a restaurant up there. I know there's a new, another pool going up there, and there'll be another 18 units going up third phase and they may change it up on me. I think the third phase, Bonefish Lodge is just, uh, it's, it's for the fishermen. They come in, I'll have eight uh, villas up here on top of the hill. Phase four, we do have a, a honeymoon cottage going on the West Cape, so. My name is Haywood Smith. I'm the Chief Security Officer in charge of Walker's Key. Uh, in August of 2000, I came here from Marsha Abacco as the police officer. I assumed the position of the officer in charge of Walker's Key and Little Grand Key. Typical day was, um, every day was just about the same. We had no problems, no crime, tourist oriented, come by boat, by plane. We're going to get back to that point and even better because we, uh, at this point right now, the current owners, Mr. and Mrs. Allen, they have a heart of gold. And I think their mission now is to make this Walker's Key reborn, a greater place tourists to come. Every day we're looking to get bigger and better, so we're looking good. These are villas. These are these are your uh, beach cottages. So this will all be beach out here eventually. And we got a, um, a pool that's going right here. And I got um, I got five more cottages that surround the pool. There'll be 16 of these in the first phase, 18 in the second phase, and then eight in the uh, four in, in in the Bonefish Lodge, and one more out on the West Cape out here for a honeymoon suite. Of course, this is my favorite view. This one right here. This is the one I like. All the cottages are the same. Fall down in the middle. Outdoor shower, outdoor shower, living area, front porch. So you'll be able to walk out on the front porch and there's, there's the Caribbean. Everything on the island is going to be generated by LNG, which is liquid natural gas. So you'll get a whole lot more economical out of that than you will a diesel. Plus it, it doesn't pollute. My last stint before I retired was uh, at West End Police Station in Grandma, 2012. Uh, that's when I uh, met the Allens. They are two sweet persons. They are God sent persons to, this, to this, I mean, the Bahamas, especially to Walker's Key. Awesome, awesome people. So I'm here at home, family. If I die, I want to come back as Ian or John. <laughs> <laughs> they are my buddies, but uh, you know, they're a little wildish, but they're good.
heading out here today. A little 12 o'clock noon fishing team style. Hopefully it's good. We got a nice wind, nice sunny day. Let's go catch some fish. That was the only glove that sits on my hand. Good for all types of fishing. Shark after it? It's a yellow eye snapper. You can see that eye bright yellow. Cut this sucker 600 feet down, baby. We did that for a couple hours and we came out here. We've hit a couple deep drop spots. We're right out front of Walker's within five miles of the island and we're gonna go in tonight, get that Traeger going, maybe hole fry a couple of these suckers and don't get much better than that here at Walker's Key. Since we've been coming out here, you know, spending a lot more time, we uh, we really like to walk, trying to find a new path, and we discover something new every day, I think. And if you hit every little nook and cranny all the way around the island, it's right at three miles, and it's up and down. It's you walk on the old reef there, you walk on the sand. Uh, it's it's an interesting walk. Just like the church, we couldn't really use the old gantry. It's like all rusted out. We almost duplicated it. We came very close. You can see this is the first IGFA uh, certified scale in the Bahamas, which is pretty neat. And it'll look almost exactly like the old one. And that was really important to me because it's the same walk almost. Uh, we redesigned it a little bit, but it's that the one main feature that people remember uh, from this island when it was in its heyday. As you can see, if you look at the old pictures, the dock platform here is much larger. So. We, we have enlarged it. We're going to use it for entertaining and for lots of pictures, lots more pictures. This is Paul Meller with Executive Marine. My brother David Meller and I, we're twins. We own Executive Marine out of Freeport, Grand Bahama. And we are here in Walker's Key. It says we are lucky enough to have the opportunity to uh, build this entire marina. Uh, we've tripled the size of it since we first started almost two years ago now. We installed all of the sheet pile, the cap, uh, all of the floating docks, steel poles with HDP pipe sleeves, uh, beautiful poor loo floating docks and uh, installed into the marina basin. Uh, we have the, the gantry over here and uh, we're just about complete with the marina. We're really excited to be here. We're excited to be a part of this and uh, using pretty much a 100% Bahamian workforce. We've been able to bring in Bahamians, a lot of people from Grand Key, train them, teach them how to, how to do what we're doing here. And uh, yeah, they're, they're all part of it. So we're super proud to be a Bahamian company that's hired Bahamians to do this project. So I think you're gonna have everything here for anybody who wants to come and enjoy this beautiful place. I used to come here as a kid when Walkers was Walkers. The, the original Walkers, you had the Walkers Key Chronicles. I was only, I think maybe 12 or 13 at the time. And it was awesome back then. I mean, you would walk into the hotel. It was an older hotel, but they had these huge fish on the walls. You had this huge bluefin tuna, these huge marlins, bonefish, tarpon. I mean, it was just insane. And uh, it was known as the fishing capital of the world back then. And as a kid, you look up and say, wow, you know, only, only if one day I could be a part of this, I could catch a fish like this. This is my boat. This is the way I got here. Uh, I actually took the 100 mile, 100 mile trip from Stewart. I live on, uh, I live in Port St. Lucie on the Port St. Lucie River. So I came out to Stewart Inlet. Got over here. Um, I was in about four to six seas, but they were pushing seas, so it wasn't too bad. That's 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 about the limits of mine. I, this this is me. That's Carl. <laughs> Uh, most I, I use this boat probably twice, two or three times a week, going over to get customs, bringing them over to check people in. Uh, believe it or not, I've got all the fishing gear. I've been fishing three times since I've been here. So, 
a lot of work going on on the island. You can't leave it that much. So, and uh, here's two more villas over here, the marina villas that we're getting ready to pour. Uh, you got these two, you got six, and you got four and five. So you go, and then you got one, two, and three up here. So you got one, two, three, four, five, six. That's eight and nine. So you'll have eight villas right here. She done away with seven, which is was gonna be in this hillside. It's gonna be up by the church. Uh, I'm gonna build it up by the church, get married right there in the chapel. And if, when you walk out the front door on this side, this cutout in the, in the side of the island right here will be the great house. So as you walk out of the chapel, you can walk straight into the bar. So you can pray for forgiveness. Go ahead and get drunk. <laughs> I am thankful for Mr. and Mrs. Allen. I mean, they're, they're great people. Uh, I look forward, they're talking about building their house right up here on top of this hill. Um, hope I get to do that for them. Uh, really like them. Some of the best owners I've ever worked for. And I believe the best owners that my company's ever worked for. Forty-five years ago, I came over that, that horizon and, and saw this island, and uh, I saw the good, bad, and the ugly, and I'll never forget that feeling I had standing here going, oh my God, my family owns Walker's Cake. It was a, a pretty neat moment for me. As I said, everything you see behind me here and everything we've have gone through has been 100% Bahamian so far, and that's one of the promises that I, that I had made to the, to the government that we would try and do that. So. But it's tremendous that uh, we got this far. It's been, uh, <laughs> I can't tell you how. A bit of a road. A bit of a road. Call us crazy, but we are literally trying to cater to everybody here from the center consoles to the sports fishing world, my, my love, and then up to, you know, a couple of these big yachts. I didn't want to overdo it with the big yachts, but we can, we can get about eight of them in here with that depth and coming in from this east side channel. We're about to open up the gateway of the Bahamas. It's been closed for way too long. But it'll be a place where, you know, you can just come and relax and really so much to do here. It's where the, the bonefish meet the blue marlin and catching a bone in the morning, going out and catching a marlin in the afternoon, you know, there's nothing like that or vice versa. You know, we do that all the time but there's tarp in here. Uh, we're in this cove right now that there's, there's permit and our favorite uh, mutton snapper and um, African pompano and cobia. Uh, the list goes on and on. All sorts of grouper we catch all the time and the marlin and the, and the bonefish and everything in between. One of my favorite things is right here to get on these uh, flats boats, my Hell's Bay Walker's K edition and Mark Casas edition over there. And we have 50 miles of uninhabited keys that have nothing but pilcher schools behind him and bonefish flats and, and, and high running currents. Like and subscribe for more Walker's Gate content. Be sure to follow us on all social media platforms, and as always, we can't wait to see you here at Walker's Cave.